And with that classic intro, welcome back everyone to the Benergizer Let's Play. I know it's been a very long time since I actually uploaded a video. Uh, I was taking some time off from YouTube to work on school, to work on other projects, to work on general life things. And uh, I figured that my to make my return with a game that pretty much everybody knows from the N64 days. Obviously, if you don't know this game, you probably never had a Nintendo as a kid or probably never play on Xbox now. But uh, yeah, this is Banjo-Kazooie. It's a game that I didn't actually play during, when it was originally released. I was a Mario 6, I was a Mario kid, I didn't play Banjo. But I did play Banjo-Tooie later on when that game was released. And I honestly can say that I much prefer Banjo-Tooie to this game, but uh, this game's not bad. So let's go ahead and press start as the game suggests and uh, go on ahead. As you can see, I have a few files here that have been played, like this one, for instance, that is completed, and this one that is also almost completed. So we're going to go ahead and use game one here, we're going to erase this file, and uh, get started. There is a long introductory sequence here, and I'm going to keep quiet through most of it, even though there's not actual dialogue, just so... Uh, you know, out of respect for the source material. All right, now jumping back in on the commentary, I just want to note the fact that not only did do Banjo and Kazooie live right next to where Bottles is, and yet the two have never met, 
but the witch's lair is literally right there, and Tootie never saw the witch before now. Amazing coincidences, huh? Let's go ahead and talk to Bottles. You can press A to speed up the dialogue, which is uh, basically just introductions at this point. One thing you can definitely tell is that this game has got the rare trademark sense of humor, which is snarky and slightly irrelevant. Or irreverent, sorry, not irrelevant. My commentary is what's irrelevant here, not not the game. See, I, Bottles is just telling us that Tootie got taken up to the mountain lair. Um, I think I'm good enough, Bottles. Thanks, though. But I'm going to go around and do where he would have taken us for the tutorials anyway, because I want to show y'all how to do them and then uh, collect some items while we're at it. So you can press B while you're running to do a forward roll. That's, your that's one of your basic attacks. Uh, you can climb trees simply by jumping at them, just like you can in Mario. Use the C buttons to move the camera around, again, just like in Mario. Hold down Z, press A to do a backflip, again, just like in Mario. This game has got a lot of similarities to Mario 64, and the two games were contemporaries. They were on the market at the same exact time. We can grab these honeycomb pieces to uh, potentially increase our life bar. We have to collect a lot of them for it to actually work, though. Um, you can kill some enemies around here. None of them are really that important to kill, though. Uh, you can... I believe it's in this tree. Yes, there's another piece of honeycomb right here. Okay, and then we can head up this way past Carrot Man here. Uh, and go up towards the waterfall. Where you can press A, and then press A again in the air to do a bit of a boost. They call it the flip-flap jump, I believe. Or no, it's not the flip-flap jump. That's the back flip. I'm trying to remember exactly... I can't remember exactly what that's called. Called it, like the flutter jump or something like that. And then there's an extra life back here behind the waterfall. Which is one of the problems that I have with this game, is that this game actually does have a life mechanic, just like Mario does, but unfortunately the difficulty curve is much, much higher than Mario's, meaning that this game is an extremely difficult one in parts. And the fact that you have lives only makes certain parts of the game harder rather than easier for artificial difficulty reasons. Um, you can press A and then B to do a jump attack, which is by far your most, uh, I'd say, versatile attack. You're going to be using that one the most throughout the adventure. Over here, we have some boulders that you can crush by holding down Z and then pressing B while you're at a standstill to do a, I believe they call it the Beak Barge attack, which this is probably the least used attack in the game. Which is unfortunate because it is powerful and it is required to solve some puzzles, but you'll often not even remember that you have it. So, that's that. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to remember what moves are basic in this game and what moves are basic to Banjo-Tooie. Because I, I, again, as I said before, I'm much more of a fan of Banjo-Tooie than I am of this game, simply because I think they cleaned up the mechanics and fixed a lot of the actual game design issues that I had with Banjo-Tooie. Um, I believe... Oh, yeah, the enemies out here can't even hurt you at this point, so don't feel free to just run into them and do whatever. So there's one more honeycomb piece to collect around here somewhere. I believe it's actually in the water. Let me see. Yeah, because the water mechanics basically it's like Donkey Kong. You can press, you just you can uh, bear paddle slash dog paddle whatever on the surface. You can press Z to I believe it's no, it's B to dive. I thought it was Z, but it's it's B. And then you press uh, A to swim slow and B to swim fast. Unfortunately, the the uh, actual swimming isn't quite where it should be because your your controls are very drifty, meaning that you don't control as well underwater as you'd like, at least not when you're going with any decent speed. And since Kazooie takes so long between strokes, you can it's basically like driving a car that you, you're pumping the gas pedal instead of holding it down. So it, you go, go in bits and surges. And then for getting six honeycomb pieces, we got an extra cell on our life bar. We're going to want to keep that uh, in mind for future areas that we're going to be going into. But we've done all we can out here on the overworld of Spiral Mountain. So let's go ahead and head up the Spiral Mountain itself and towards the Witch's Lair. If we tried to come up here before doing the all, before getting all of the moves, Bottles would have taken the bridge down and wouldn't let us pass until we'd had learned all the moves from him. But since we skipped the tutorial, we can we could have just come up here right away if we wanted to skip getting the honeycomb pieces. 
There's a nice, cool little animation of bottles burrowing back into his hole. Then we can cross the bridge, and there's a great little dynamic music change as we transition into the witch's lair, which is going to be the home for the rest of the game. And we get a nice little cutscene detailing exactly what trouble, what kind of trouble 2D is in. Discerning and adult viewers may notice that there's a lot of humor in this game that will go over the heads of younger kids. Barely, barely PG in some cases. And up here, we've got a collectible. Mr. Jiggy. These are basically our, going to be our power stars throughout the game, our Jiggies. Basically, they're the collectibles we need to get through the world. But whereas in Mario 64, uh, collection is sort of an arbitrary thing needed to open doors by breaking magic spells. In this game, it's slightly more kinetic, not not a whole lot more kinetic. It's still breaking spells, but uh, we're doing it by solving puzzles and actually using them as puzzle pieces rather than simply as MacGuffins. So the bottle is telling us that we need to fill in the missing spaces on the puzzles with jigsaw pieces. Later pe puzzles obviously are going to have a lot more pieces missing and we have to collect pieces from different worlds to be able to fill in fill in pictures to go to new worlds so we unlock the first world mumbo's mountain 